With Blender 4.0, there's finally an easy way to do values to string multiple times with the repeat zone. This is one of the brand new features within Blender 4.0, which is currently in beta, soon to be released. So what does that do? I mean, you probably have seen multiple ways where people have tried to do visualizers for indices and things like that, and they're all kind of hacky. And the reason why it's been kind of hacky is because there wasn't really a straightforward way. And I'll demonstrate to you exactly why. So we need a specific node that's called value to string in order to convert a value to a string. However, as you can see of the input types, in fact, let me duplicate this here, value to string, it only works with single values. It does not work with fields, which is the diamond inputs and outputs, which it doesn't have. Meaning that if we wanted to have multiple information that passes true and becomes string or text, there was no way to really do that. Luckily, finally we can do it with a repeat zone. So I knew it was possible and I looked quite a bit around to try to figure out how to do this. Luckily, I stumbled around the channel of Cartesian Caramo, who does a lot of really good live streams on everything nodes. You should definitely check this channel out if you're all about nodes. And within here, he was doing something that was exactly similar to what I was looking for, which is understanding how to visualize all the nodes and the inputs and the outputs. And so all the credit really goes to Cartesian Caramo. So thank you so much for showing that. I just dissected this and I want to describe what he's done uh, in a little bit more detail over here. So what are we doing here? How does this work? So I've got two setups here. They're very straightforward and quite similar. The first one is visualizing the vertex index. And the second one is visualizing the face area. Now the face area one is particularly important for architectural design in the early phases when we're trying to do conceptual design, which is a lot of what I do. And this is actually where the idea came from. So right now I have the group output hooked up to this first one, which is called the vertex index. So let's divide this a couple of times and you see that all the new vertices pop up in here. So let's take a look at how this works. So we have a group input and the group input then goes into a domain size where we find out the number of points that we currently have. And then we create a repeat zone. So this whole area here, this is the new feature within Blender 4, which is a repeat zone. From there, we have a geometry and within the repeat zone, there's a way to add extra parameters. So if I open up my sidebar by pressing N in the geometry nodes, node 3, and if we go to node and we click on the repeat zone one, you see here I've added something that basically everybody else that's been doing it is adding as well, which is a count integer. So that's very similar in a for loop. It's just understanding which time we're repeating in. So what does this count do? So this count is very simple. It's uh, equal to itself plus one where we get it in and in out from the repeat zone where we keep a track of understanding exactly where we are. So that's very important. And we start at zero. We can also start at one. And as you can see, the first index, index number zero, is kind of lost. So we can kind of uh, filter for specific areas. For now, I'll just keep it at zero. And what's the trick here? So we've got a compare node. We're comparing the index to whichever count we are on at the moment. Then, and this is a really nice trick, which we're getting the selection just of that attribute, that field attribute with the attribute statistic node. By the way, you can press control H to limit any node to only the inputs and the outputs that are actually selected. And that's why this looks a little bit more compact than the typical version where you've got a lot more going on in here. What do we have? We have the input geometry. So this is all of our geometry that's coming in through here. And then we are using that only on a specific selection, which is equal to the index. What happens? So we find one index, then we repeat. Then we find another index and then we repeat. Then a third index and then we repeat and then we repeat and repeat and repeat. So it happens quite a few times, which is not the most efficient way to do this at the moment, but the only possible way. Apparently they're working on something that's called parallel loops within Blender. So that should be making this a lot faster. And I'll demonstrate that this does significantly slow down if we're using too many. Cool. So 
this attribute statistic, the first one is position. So we're getting the position that's based on the current index within our loop. That's the first attribute statistic. Then we're using the same idea here where we're utilizing the current index to get what we want. So this is the actual property. And so we're getting our index and it's passing through the attribute statistic again. Then that index goes through the typical process of making values to string. So we have a value to string node, then string to curves node, and then we can fill that curve. And I've set a material for it just so we can see it in a different way. Now, if we're just at that point though, let me disable these. You see that even though we have the indices, they're not in the right place. So to get them in the right place, we need to position them. And that's why we're doing this attribute statistic here on top, which is based on the position. So we're essentially filtering and selecting just the one position that we're getting, which is equal to the current index. And that's placing these in the correct place. Then I'm doing a slight offset here with another transform geometry, just so everything is a little bit offset. And that value can, can vary, can even be zero. It's just exactly on the mesh. And I prefer to have it slightly higher. So once we have our text coming through, then we use a join geometry node. So we're joining this to the previous input. And notice, we don't have anything going in there. Everything is done inside of the loop. So whatever is coming in from before, it's basically doing this, it's coming in through, and then it's joining. So we're adding more and more within the loop. And then we have our output, and I'm joining the output from here, from the visualizer of the nodes, to the group input, which is the original mesh. So anytime we go now, so I'm going to duplicate everything again, and you see we get our new indices that are popping up exactly where they should be. Now, as I mentioned, we do have to be careful here a little bit with uh, the amount of information that we have. For example, if I go in here and I put a subdivision modifier before, let's put this at three levels. So my computer is thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking, and it's thinking because it's iterating through a lot of times. I might even crash it, I hope not. I think I have it saved. Uh, I should have done two levels. Anyways, so it's gonna take a bit of time, as you can see, because it's doing these loops which are not very efficient. It basically is looping, uh, I don't know, let's see how is how many indices do we have here? We've got 2,400 times. So how long did this whole thing take? 25 seconds, that's a lot of time. So be mindful that this is useful, but it gets clogged down really quickly. So let's get rid of that subdivision. And now let's go on and see what else we can do here now that we have this kind of setup done. So we can also do face areas. So this works in a very similar way with the difference being is that we have a couple of extra notes in the beginning. So, and let's select it just so you see how it works. So here it is now. I mean, our areas are not too big, so we don't have a lot of areas and let's increase the string numbers so we can see them. So each face has its own area. And if we make one face bigger, we get that area. If we duplicate a face here and scale it up, you see that we have an accurate area. I think this probably works with the object level scale. In other words, let's test it out. So if this is bigger, yes. So it's just like any other modifier, you have to apply your object scale. So control A, apply object scale. And now we have the, the proper area of each of those faces. So how does this work? So again, we have a group input, which is our mesh. Then we're creating mesh to points. So we want to get the point center of each face. That's just so we have the same number of points as the number of faces. Then we get a domain size and this converts it to a point cloud. So we need to use a point cloud. And then that goes into the repeat zone. The rest here looks pretty similar. We have introduced an integer count and we're adding plus one to that count which got lost somewhere over here. I think it's when I added an extra material node in there. And then we have an equal node just to filter out. 
we have the attribute statistic one, which gives us the position. And this is to make sure that these go to the right places. And then we have another one. And here we've changed this to face. So we're using face area and then value the string, fill curve, set material, transform, and then transform slightly again. We can do that in the same transform node. I just felt like adding an extra one in here to have these face areas. This is like a game changer for me because a lot of times I do, I'll show you what I do. So shift a mesh plane. Let's just go in here and I'm going to make some kind of tower massing, right? Very, very typical thing. So let's rotate this slightly and then let's rotate this again. Maybe the other way and shrink it down a little bit. Now let's give it a sub diff, get rid of the bottom face, select these edges and these edges, give them a crease of one. And then let's do the same for these ones here. Give them a, a crease of one and let's scale them in. So now we have some kind of massing, right? And within this massing, we typically want to find the floor areas. So add a new mesh plane. Let's go into edit mode and scale it so everything is encompassed in here. And now we can do this either with modifiers, with an array modifier or within geometry nodes. For me, arrays much quicker. So let's add an array, uncheck relative, check constant, distance should be Z 3.4 meters, let's say, and increase the count. And the reason, by the way, the reason why we have to do this with additional modifiers and not only in geometry nodes is because of the Boolean. So the way that this works is because our floors at the moment, as you'll see, they're single faced, we need to use the fast solver. And that solver is not available in geometry nodes, unfortunately. I've asked so many times on the dev forum on Blender to have the fast solver included within geometry nodes, but um, it hasn't been incorporated. Anyways, so once we have this in here, let's intersect these floors. And we can even hide our original shape now because all we care about is these floors here. And let's go and visualize this a bit better with some ambient occlusion. Let's make it 20. So this is very typical. We want to know a couple of things. We want to know the typical, the area per floor, and then the total area. And now we can visualize that really easily. So let's go and add a geometry nodes modifier. And let's choose the only one that we have here, which is the face area. So now we have the numbers and they're really tiny and in there. So we have to modify a couple of things to see them properly because this is now 26.4 meters. So it's pretty big. So first I want to change the size to something like one meter. And now we can almost see them. And next we can use this extra transform geometry that we placed in there to move them slightly out of the way so we can see them better. And now we have a couple of other things that don't work so well. But here it is. So we have our area per floor. So we know that our bottom floor is 493, 478. This is incredibly useful for architecture design. So just like anything else in geometry nodes, we can make really nice groups with this information that we have in here. So how do we do that? First off, I'm going to duplicate these just so we keep the originals. And then I'm going to select all the information that I want to have grouped. In this case, for the face area, it's this. So control G and then we e exit. And now we can have this and we can call it visualizer face area. So now it looks much cleaner and it will work on any kind of geometry. So not just this kind of geometry that we have here. And we join it with the original. Now we're not seeing the output because I have multiple geometry group outputs. So now it works exactly as it did before. And we can call this out at any point. And let's do the same with the top. So let's select all of this information here. And first off, I want to create a uh, reroute node in here just to make sure that we have only one input. So select everything and control G to group it. And that's it. And let's call this visualizer vert index. Now this file is available on Patreon in case you want to check it out and use those visualizer elements right away. Thanks so much for the Patreons that are supporting us. 
what else do I need to say? Oh, so if you find this valuable, please give it a like and subscribe. And if you would like to support the work that we do, also consider becoming a Patreon where we do fairly regularly. I try to post at least once a month. Sometimes I get into like a really good flow where I'm posting quite a bit, sometimes a little bit less. Nevertheless, it really helps to see people supporting the channel's work because that makes me want to do even more tutorials.